from when I was about eight, had a dream of being a world champion, and it came through, man. So I'm part of history, thank God. Hello, my name is Charles Bowman, and today, well, I'm delighted to host another exclusive interview on Off the Agenda with a great British boxer who began his professional career in the 1980s, quickly achieving 21 consecutive wins by knockout and in so doing catching the eye of the international boxing world. He has fought against Tyson, Eklund and Lewis and in 1995, in winning against Oliver McCall, became WBC heavyweight champion of the world. He is an undisputed British boxing champion and throughout his career recorded a remarkable 40 wins from 45 fights. He is a person who has faced challenges both inside and outside the ring, but has done so much to destigmatize mental health both in sport and beyond. From the Royal Albert Hall to the MGM Grand Arena, he has flown the flag and now actively supports the next generation physically and mentally through his own foundation. Known to many as True Brit, let's hear from the person himself, Frank Bruno. Well, Frank, thank you so much for joining me today. And it's a real delight to meet you. And I start by saying that I hope you've been keeping safe and well. Uh, yes, we please. have a huge amount to talk about, an extraordinary career spanning boxing, acting, mental health advocacy, and much more. And of yes. course, the newly released Sky documentary with Mike Tyson. But let me start uh, by asking, as indeed I ask everyone, how have you been faring through what have obviously been challenging times in recent months? It's changing times, but I've got a gym. I've got a music um, studio built especially for when it came because I knew that it, it, it's gonna, you'd be locked down, you can't go out nowhere. So I, I'm, I'm pretty happy. And I've got a hot tub, I've got a steam room. So it's like a health farm at home. So usually I don't really go out unless I've got a job on or whatever. I've, there's a gym five minutes up the road from me and it's a 24 hour gym. So I have no problem. It's, my sort of like life being at home so it's been hard here and there but if i get um fed up i'll go in the music room if i get that fed up i in the gym so uh, i can keep fit and you know what i mean just rock and roll and wait for boris to say we're allowed out again fantastic frank and you're you're looking very fit very well yes, um thank you and obviously you've been supporting your west ham indeed definitely you know what i mean i'm not like mad on West Ham like some people are, but they are my favourite team. Because when I moved over to Chapel Heath from Wandsworth, West Ham training ground was right about a mile and a bit down the road. And my knuckles needed to be treated and they gave it to me free of charge. So I always fly the flag for um, West Ham because they looked after me. They didn't charge me one penny. Oh, that's very good to hear. And you, actually, you and I have a, a little bit in common, not only, uh, did we spend part of our lives living both in Essex? We yeah. both supported West Ham. I too, yeah. indeed. You got and to be indeed, very careful who you tell that, Charles. You know, because you might get a hooliganism, <laughs> abusing you on Facebook or something like that. You know what I mean? Well, they're doing very well this season, Frank, and we Definitely. can and hope they continue that success. Yeah. And you and I were also born in the same year, uh, 1961. 61. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and only 22 days apart, I think. Oh, so I'm older than you then, yeah? So You are 22 so. days more wise than okay, I. Okay, we can. <laughs> but if I may start, Frank, 19 years on from that date in 1981, you, you became a professional boxer. Yeah. And you quickly achieved 21 consecutive wins by knockout. And yeah. it was that streak that really caught the eye of the international boxing world. And... Yeah. What I wanted to ask was, what was the moment that made you decide that you wanted to take up uh, the role of a prof as a professional boxer? I left the boarding school and I'm dyslexic, so they sent me down to a special school in Sussex. Um, I, had, I, didn't, I didn't have the education, I didn't go to university or nothing like that. When I come out of school, I just wanted to do boxing because um, I love fighting. I used to do karate and different things with friends. So I just wanted to do some sort of like thought that I could make some money, decent money, to set myself up for the rest of my life. And the dream come true, more than the dream come true. But um, th that was my plan, you know? From when I was eight, when I was 12, 15, 16, and then we got into action when I left school at 16. Started doing a little bit of boxing. I had to get a couple of jobs, because my mum said that, you got to start paying bills now. 
pay rent. So I, I tried a little bit of metal polishing. I'm um, working at Lonsdale Sports Shop. I've worked in the bingo hall and on the, the building site. So it's nice to do them sort of like jobs to make you train that a little bit more harder and just to, you know, get on the right path. And I did. And I upset a lot of my friends because I didn't, I kept away with, away from them because they were bad influence on me and they take it very, but if you want to be a boxer and an elite boxer, you've got to let certain yeah. different things and be on the right path. Uh, indeed. And it was a huge commitment and a huge investment of time and everything else. And obviously, yeah, in, in September 1995, 14 years after you became a professional boxer, and I think, Frank, it was at your fourth try, you outpointed WC champion uh, Oliver McCall over 12 yeah. uh, rounds, and you became world champion. Yeah. As you were five minutes. Yeah. Well, well, a little longer, but an incredible yeah. achievement, an incredible yeah. achievement. Thank and you as you reflect much. back, you know, who was your most difficult opponent? Was it that match or others or that fight or others? Um, and I what think, sort of type of training and mindset did you need to prepare yourself for those fights? Yeah. The toughest one out of them was the guys that beat me, you know. Um, Bone Crusher Smith was a, um, a <laughs> big lump, but he could punch, he could knock down the house, he could knock down a tree. I kept away from him for about nine and a half rounds or nine rounds and he caught me and I got stopped. But I'm glad I did get stopped because I would have been chucked to the deep end. So I didn't have much amateur experience and I, I was knocking over people. It made me look more better than I was. But at the end of the day, I didn't have no qualms about losing because sometimes it tests the character of the man. It's all right punching people. So when people punch you back and give you the same medicine that you're giving them, I had to go into the drawing board and go back to the gym and train a little bit more harder. See, Witherspoon, the days when it was 15 rounds, he, I was beating him up until 11 round, I got run out of steam and I got stopped by him. I went in there with one head and come out there with two heads because he beat me up so bad. And Tyson is another story. Well, perhaps we'll come on to that in, in, in a second, but it, it was after 45 professional fights in which you were successful in a remarkable 40 of those fights. Yeah. You decided to retire. And I was keen to ask, what, what made you decide to retire from boxing? And, and, and out of interest, what did the extraordinary army of supporters that you have say yeah. about that? So Charles, the reason I had to retire, I had to detach retina in my eye when I fought Tyson the second time. I shouldn't have been in the ring, but I had a family and I had to put bread and corn and set them up so I didn't have to be comfortable, you know what I mean? But um, I had to retire, I didn't have no choice because my eye was detached retina. If you ever had a detached retina, it's like a disco like flashing your eye all the time. And I, I just had to retire. I didn't want to retire, but I had to. I, because the eyes, that was my third operation I had. On my Indeed, it was after your second fight uh, with, with, with Mike, Mike Tyson. Uh, Frank, so we've spoken about Mike Tyson and Sky have just released um, its new film and documentary about you and, and Mike Tyson. Largely your idea, as I understand it, that 31 years after you first traded punches, it was a chance to close a chapter uh, and some say reconcile that relationship with someone with whom you share so much and an opportunity clearly for the two of you to catch up. And the feedback I know has been very positive. You've come across as old friends in a natural, honest and authentic conversation. Can you tell us a little bit more about the documentary and perhaps give your perspective? Well, I was scared when they said I had to go to Miami in two days of the lockdown and get tested here and now. But when I met Mike, I was a bit dubious. Of, he, he has a little entourage around him, but he's got rid of the entourage because they sponge money off him or whatever. But I, we sat down chatting by ourselves and we were talking about the old days when I met him at 15. He, he was 15, I was about 19, and he was my sparring partner. We talked about customer, though, we talked about life, et cetera, et cetera. But it was nice meeting him because he was calm, he was cool, he didn't have no people talking in the background and winding things up. And it was nice to see him in a good place because he's been through his marriage breakup and different things like that through life. So he's had it hard. He's had mental 
issues here and now. But it was, it, you know, it was a privilege for me to sit down with him. It was an honor having the, 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 the documentary done by two good guys that knew their business, you know what I mean? So I haven't seen the documentary because when my daughter started crying, I'd run out of the room like a chicken. So I would watch it another time, but I had some good feedback, especially from yourself. Um, even the postman this morning said, oh, thumbs up for the, for the documentary. You know, it was a good, what well, they said it was good, but yeah, I watched a little bit and I disagree with them. Well, it was natural, honest, authentic, as I say. Um, and it looked as if it was two friends meeting again. Yeah. No, no, it was nice. It was all right. If, if he had his own Gerard, I might have had to get the baseball bat out or something. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. He was there by himself in his PA and he's trying to rebuild his career back. Well, you know, he, he's got so much to offer, Mike. He's very, very knowledgeable. Very, very clever that a lot of people give him credit for. Unfortunately, when he, the, the crowd, the hangers on are around him, it just gets messy and you can't really get through to Mike. But I, I was privileged to sit down with him and we could have a little chat and we shook hands beforehand and we shook hands when, when we left, you know what I mean? So it was nice. And you'll see him again? Yeah, definitely see him again. I'm going to go over to Vegas or, or Los Angeles, where he is, and to chill out with him. But... I would rather deal with him himself, as I said to you before, because when it, 30, 30 people is entourage and they all have got to be pay, paid, it weren't nice seeing him before, but it, I felt privileged to. The documentary was built around me and Mike and people like yourself have said some kind things. It was a good documentary and you, 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 you said it from the heart. So it means a lot to me, thank you. Frank has faced challenges both in the ring and beyond, coping with problems following retirement principally associated with mental health. He was ahead of the curve in opening up on the issues he faced and talking openly about mental health. All this from a person who was world champion in a sport with a brand synonymous with a tough guy. His work beyond has done so much in helping break down the stigma associated with opening up on mental health in sport and beyond. And with mental health being such an issue at this time and with lockdown having had such an impact on the world's mental health, I asked him what words of support he would have for those currently struggling yet feeling hesitant to speak out. Men don't get things off their plate. Men would um, knock themselves up with stress, anxiety, um, everything, anything could be, you, you, you could do. You, you, but they missed a mortgage one week or one month, and that could stress you out. You get a brown envelope saying that you owe people money, and the stress what that can give to a lot of people is unbelievable. And men don't be honest, but they are honest, but they, they, they will keep that close to their chest because they think it's embarrassing to admit to someone that you're you're, you're um you, you're having a breakdown. Even if a man cries, men don't cry. You're not supposed to cry like women. And I've been through it all, and I just had to come out. And when I come out, I was saying that I've been through depression and I've been through a marriage breakup. I used to have 25 acres of um, at Audra, so I, I reached my goal, and it was a dream house that I always wanted, but I lost it, and I had a breakdown. And it was as simple as that. I couldn't handle the pressure. The kids went. I was left in the house by myself, and not crying for no sympathy. It goes with the ups and downs of life. Oh, well, as I say, extraordinary bravery, both within the ring and, and, and beyond. And since yeah. that, Frank, you've set up the Frank Bruno Foundation with its mission of building healthy bodies and healthy minds and supporting those facing or recovering from mental health. Um, yeah. What Can you tell us a little bit more about it, the, the foundation, what you're hoping to achieve today, tomorrow, and actually how we can all help? Yeah. It's just a gym that people can come in, do a 12, 12 round um, fitness thing, sit down with the people, get what's stressing them out. Professional people that, you know, I mean, know about people, what, see signs of people going through a mental breakdown. We've got a boxing ring there, a lot of bags, and we're just going to bring it to the community with the people that are suffering from mental health. They can come through the door and not feel shame to unload their bits and pieces. It'd be confidential 
privacy, you know what I mean, that they can have that we ain't gonna shout out and bully them and say this one's what that and that one's what this. And just a boxing gym because it's a non-contact, but the, the fitness of skipping, hitting the bag and talking about your things, they come in a little bit tense, but go out relaxed that there's people there that they can talk to. That's the most one of the most important things to is to talk to someone about it, get it off your plate, someone chuck some com confidence in you and just build you up a little bit. Sometimes we feel weak and we feel we ain't got no one we can go to. What we won't feel feel ashamed of saying that you, you've got anxiety and you've got a depression and you, you, your heart's beating and you're not right. Because sometimes we all go through the same thing. We are the human. And of course, sport and exercise generally plays a very critical part of, of that sort of opening and opening up process and the healing process. Yeah, uh, would, definitely. Would, what, 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 out of interest, what, what sport now is, 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 is helping you and keeping you active? I run, I run a lot. I do weight training. I've got three punch bags in the garden and I, I hit my bags and, you know, I'm in practice and I've got a hot tub. I've got a health farm, Champions now, 20 minutes from my house. I'm a member there. Um, near Silverstone, there's another hotel that's got a health farm. I've got, I, I've got, I'm a member there. I just try and look after myself. And it's important to look after yourself because nobody can look after yourself more better than yourself, if you think what I'm saying. So you've got to try and dig deep, grit your teeth. There's always someone worse off than yourself. Now, how I see it, if you don't think that you're worse off yourself, get what's happening in certain parts of Africa. Look what's happening in, you know what I mean, Mexico, India, and there's people on the street, even Canada. I saw a documentary the other day there got heroin, everyone's, just, not everyone, but there's a lot of people that are, are high up on heroin and serious drugs and whatever. But you've got to be honest to yourself and there's places out there that you can go and let loose what all the tension in you and just let it loose, talk to people and recharge your battery. Because we all go through it in mental health. That anybody that tells you don't go through it, they're talking talking porcupines. Indeed, and it's a very much a topic of the moment uh, as a consequence of the, the, the pan pandemic. You, yeah. you hear it mentioned everywhere, every day. Uh, any p particular advice you would encourage people to, to follow? You know, you, you've got to stay strong and you've got to hold tight because we, we as human, England, I think, is one of the best countries in the world. They're very fair and they provide for a lot of people more than a lot of people give them credit for. If you go over certain different parts, you wouldn't get medication unless you pay for it. You wouldn't get anybody caring for you or setting up a charity or raising money to help people out there. You know what I mean? That's what the Friend Bruno Foundation is, is to help people and for people come in there and feel safe that they can talk and get it off their plate because that's half the battle one. Because we, especially as men, will never discuss our privacy and keep it close to their chest because they feel it's shameful upon them. Uh, uh, absolutely. And are there any any asks of us all in relation to your the Bruno Frank Bruno Foundation? Any sorry? Any asks, any requests, any any ways in which we can support and help? Just you know I mean just just talk about the Frank Bruno. That's that's half of the, the battle and just half of the help. If you've got a penny or a pound or anything you can donate. You know what I mean? We're just willing to do anything that comes into it. I'm going to I'm gonna be down the gym quite a few times because it's not too far from me and be part of it. Just don't use the name. I'm going to be in the, the lessons and talking to people and just to make it down to earth that they can come and unload, you know what I mean? And get the pressure off them. Because sometimes if you knock things up and you stiffen up, you start frowning, you start stiffing up and it's not nice for you to beat yourself up like that. No, and you have done so much in helping break down that uh, the stigma associated with mental health. The uh, stigma is a very, sorry, sorry, Charles, sorry. No, no, carry on, on Frank. No, no, you're, you're in charge, you, you go on. So you're first. No, you're, please do, stigma no, you No, no, I insist you're in charge. I am Sir Bruno, you're Sir Charles, you're bigger than me. You go ahead, sorry. Well, Frank, no, but anyhow, your, 
if, can I move to your boxer, actor, commentator, mental health advocate? You've been a role model across a lot of different areas throughout your life. How easy has it been to navigate these career changes? It's very good for me because I had to detach to on the rent now and I had to be off from boxing for two years. So I've done a little bit of pantomime. I've done a little bit of HP adverts here and there. I've had the good innings because I've got a, um, a doctorate from Bournemouth University. I was on stage getting the doctorate. I started shaking because I see all these people, kids coming through and they're the latest people all around the world. They are, they get what they worked at university for, but I, I wonder what am I doing here? You know what I mean? I started shaking because I couldn't believe that they were going to give me a doctorate for the mental health that I've contributed to. You know what I mean? But you just got to keep it real, but don't beat yourself up and take all the pressure by yourself because going through a, um, a breakdown, going through anxiety, if you if you do it by yourself, sometimes why some people commit suicide and whatever because they don't have someone to talk to to give them a little lift and put them on the right track. If you do what I'm saying, it's, it, it's a mental health is a, a all round system. You get marriage breakup, something happened to your kids, you lose your house, you, you, it, 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 can, it can go from A to Z, Z to A of problems, what people go through. But if you talk, that's half the battle taken off yourself and realize how some people haven't got shoes supporting their feet, not a roof over their head. You've got to be contented. And, England wouldn't leave. Some people are homeless. Some people haven't got food to put in there, but it shouldn't be like that. You know what I mean? Because if you have comic relief and whatever, they arrange money to give abroad when they should stop giving it abroad and build up the people what's going through all the difficulties at, at the moment. With this this um, virus that's going around, I've never heard of it in 59 years I've been alive. And it's a horrible, horrible thing. And when the government say you're not allowed outside, especially you don't go outside and stick to the script, because they must know, they must have professors and doctors advising people to lock down, you know? Frank was keen to ask me a couple of questions. He recognised the link between the badge I was wearing and the mental health agenda and was keen to understand more. The badge on your suit, what does that stand for? Well, thank you, Frank. Actually, it's very relevant. This particular green, green badge actually reflects the the Green Ribbon Mental Health Awareness oh, Campaign that we were nice. and, and have been running through the Lord Mayor's Appeal. Uh, nice. And that campaign has become a national and an international movement to help also end the stigma around mental health in the workplace. And each year to mark Mental Health Awareness Week and World Mental Health Day, we encourage business to wear these green ribbons that you can Where see. Where would you get that? Where would you get that from? Um, well, we can we can we can speak about helping to supply. It comes through the, the the Lord Mayor's appeal, but I can very much put you in touch with them. If you don't mind, I'll get Paul to do it. The, the PA. Thank you. Well, look, look, absolutely, we will engage with that. And this last year, green ribbons. I was thrilled to say were worn in 101 towns and cities across the world. In fact, not just in London, not just in the Thank UK. You. Yeah. And over 170,000 green ribbons were worn nationally. So nice. it's a growing campaign and one we're proud of and one we need to, need to continue to promote. Frank, can I, I have one final question, if I may, to you. Your life full of extraordinary achievements um, and throughout you've shown extraordinary dignity, honesty, humour and humility. Uh, you are a British icon and, a, and role model. What would be your advice to the next generation of boxers? I would say, you know what I mean, um, train very, very hard. You know what I mean? Some people give up when they lose. I had to, before I could appreciate being the world champion, I had to lose. And sometimes when you lose, it's good for you to lose, to pick yourself up, to know what it's like to be down. So I, I, I had four to five fights, lost five, five to world champions. I ain't got no qualms about me losing to them world champions because they were very, very tough dudes and that. I think in life, you've got to focus on what you you, 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 you want. And you know what I mean? That the world's your oyster. If you want, want something, you've got to work hard, dedicate yourself and have a little bit of luck, but your luck is 
hard work. And some people don't understand about hard work. Some days the sun can't always shine. The rain can't always rain. It can't always snow. But when it's good, you've got to just be willing. There's a lot of people by your side, behind you, in front of you, want to just knock you down from your pedestal. But you've got to be tough mentally and physically in whatever you do. You know, just off a duck's backside, what some critics will say about you and put you down and jealousy. But you get all that, put it to one side and be hungry, belly, and just get what you, you, you want. It's not rocket science, you know what I mean? You persevere, like I'm sure when you be a chartered accountant, you have to do university, college, and it's not easy, but you know, you just, it's, it's a tough world out there sometimes, you know what I mean? And cruel world at, at times, you know what I mean? But we don't always have to be cruel. It's about time we spread a little bit more love and understanding. Perseverance, hard work, look for the opportunities. And earn your luck. The light is appearing at the end of the tunnel, we hope, uh, and a yeah. sense of optimism out, out, out there. What, broad, what more broadly would you encourage the youth uh, to do to leverage and harness the opportunities that lie ahead? There's so much opportunity to lie ahead for kids out there that don't know what happens with um, things they've got. They've got any machine, computers, is the different world that you can connect people and talk to people that, that they could do all their different things if they persevere, work very, very hard, get their head down, keep away from the negativity. Everybody goes through a bad day, a good day, and things like that, you know what I mean? Everybody thinks that they're hard, hard done by it, but there's an opportunity for a lot of people, and the best thing to do is be hungry belly and to determine and fight for what you want, not fight as we go in the ring, but if you, chart accountants, yeah? To get that, that is a powerful name in itself. And to go to college and to go to university and pass and be a, a child accountant, that is a serious dude in itself, you know what I mean? But if you want to be, the world's your oyster. Be what you want to be because you can play. If you work hard, go to bed, study, get your head down as a youngster, that's your future, you know what I mean? So it may sound easy. It's not as easy as what you think, but just grit your teeth and dig in hard, you know what I mean, and persevere. I think that's a very positive note on which to, to end. And thank you, Frank, so, so much. It's been a huge pleasure speaking with you. To thank the, you very congratulations much. Congratulations well. on all that you've achieved, and we wish you all the yes. very, very best ahead. Once again, yes, Frank, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Respect, sir. I'm Edward, sir. Well, it's been a privilege to speak to Frank Bruno today, an undisputed British boxing champion and a person who has shown great bravery in the ring and in facing challenges beyond. He has done so much in helping break down the stigma associated with opening up on mental health in sport and beyond. Thank you, Frank, and thank you all for listening. Stay tuned for more conversations, great discussions and inspirational guests. And that's all from me other than to say, Thank you again for watching and bye for now.